I can give you Kelly's objectives, yes. <clears throat> Today Kelly is going to be rehearsing and practicing the speech he'll be doing at the contest on Saturday. We're going to do a round robin evaluation, which means we're going to go around in the circle and everyone can give Kelly some feedback to help them give a winning speech. And what we know is that with the help we're going to give Kelly, he's going to give such a good speech that he will not be aghast with anything that happens on Saturday. Please, the job's master. Five to seven minutes. Please help me welcome up Kelly Smith, solo, solo Kelly Smith. Have you ever been so hungry that you would even eat a porcupine, a rattlesnake, or even a mouse? Fellow Toastmasters, distinguished guests. When I was 18 years old, I took a wilderness survival training course in the deserts of the Southwest. This 110 mile long three week adventure proved to be a life changing experience in more ways than one. They kicked us off the bus at 3.30 in the morning with nothing but the clothes on our backs. Three days later, we arrived at a small high mountain lake. We saw a sheep standing there tied to a tree. All right, T-bone steaks coming up. We were hungry and delirious. <laughs> T-bones don't come from sheep. <laughs> <laughs> but our enthusiasm for killing it kind of waned a bit when our instructor gave us a profound speech about how this sheep was willing to give its life in order to save ours. He said, no, you got to do it. It's part of the program. So we slit its throat, cut him into pieces, and gave each of the groups parts of him to cook in various ways. They chopped off the head, threw it to me, and I caught his big eyes staring at me. I don't know how you cook a sheep's head, so I just threw it on the fire. <laughs> the smell of burning wool filled the air. <laughs> a little while later, one of the female instructors came up, plucked out the eyeballs, popped them in her mouth. Oh. It was my favorite part, she said. But I got sick because I ate a part cooked by somebody else that was rancid. I mean, I got deathly sick. I lost about 20 pounds in just a couple of days, which would make me 60 pounds lighter than I am right now. Some people felt I should go home. But I didn't want to quit. I wanted to make it to the end because that's where we had soil. Three days of being entirely on our own. When we got to that part of the trip, they dropped us off at various locations along the river. They gave us a bag of food, said, be safe, we'll be back a few days to pick you up. I made my camp underneath an old cottonwood tree, a few doves nesting in the branches. I laid out my wool blanket. I made a fire without matches, gathered some firewood and some water, and looked at that bag of food. In my emaciated condition, I was extremely hungry. Now there really wasn't much more in there than one large meal. But I opened it up, mixed a little bit of the brown sugar, powdered milk, and oatmeal in my hand. Oh, oh it was the most delicious food I've ever eaten. It was so good. I did it again and licked my dirty hands. <laughs> and I did it again and again and again. I said, you better slow down. You're gonna run out of food. I was so hungry, I couldn't stop. I kept going. Finally, I realized I had eaten almost all my food. And I became furious. I put the rest of the food back in the bag, tied it in a knot, and threw it as far as I could. And then I yelled at myself for having such little self-control. I yelled at myself for everything I'd ever done in my life every sin, every selfish act, every wicked thought that I could remember came pouring out in vicious, venomous words. I yelled, I threw things, I broke things, I hit things, and I lost my voice. I was so mad at myself. This went on for 
three and a half hours. And then things got really bad. I started saying things that weren't true. I accused myself of doing something. I said, wait, wait, I didn't do that. But I was on a roll and I just kept going. And after a while I said something else. Oh, I didn't do that either. But I just kept going. I was determined to get to the end, whatever the end was. Finally I said, and the time you murdered that guy. I said, wait, I, I never murdered anybody. What's going on here? Who put those thoughts in my head? I looked around and felt a terrible darkness surrounding me. And I realized I was not alone. Innumerable beings were relishing in my self-destruction and feeding negative energy. And I became very afraid. I wanted to run, but there's no place to run. My eyes darted back and forth, trying to find a way out. I was nervous about what was happening. I was afraid. In fact, I'd never been this afraid in my life. I fell to my knees and prayed like I had never prayed in my life. I prayed for deliverance from this very real, though unseen enemy. Love poured into my soul from the top of my head to the bottom of my feet. The darkness vanished. I love radiated out in all directions, and I felt a profound sense of gratitude. I was grateful for my parents. I was grateful for this trip. I was grateful for being sick. I was grateful for everything around me. For three days, I basked in this love. And I sang and I prayed and I felt pure happiness. Once a horsefly came, landed on my arm and bit me. I didn't care. I was grateful for it. Nothing could spoil the gratitude I felt. And love radiated out from everything around me, from the cliffs, the trees, and the river. And I could perceive every leaf on a tree and every grain of sand at my feet in a way that is impossible to describe. Everything was perfect. Since that day, every coo of a dove <clears throat> sends me instantly back to somewhere along the Escalante River, there's an old cottonwood tree that really no one would notice. But to me, it's the most beautiful place on earth. It's where I found something more valuable than food. It's where I found that God loved me.